right. Mrs. Tierney? Um, have you seen Mr. Baskin? He is dancing, perhaps. Oh, no, he is, and I've looked for him everywhere. He seems to have disappeared. It is possible, then, that he is with Monsieur Levalier. Oh, yes. Yes, he could be, I suppose. In which case, he will return shortly. And there's certainly no cause for concern. Mr. Bascom cannot come to any harm here in the castle. Can he? Oh. It's all right, David. It's all right. You're safe now. It's all enough to pick yourself up. One thought. To run, to, to get away from the fire. I wasn't thinking about Anne or anyone or anything else. I was, I was terrified out of my skull. I was convinced the flames were after me in that any minute. Gently lie back. Oh. Fire. It's the one thing that's Guaranteed to scare the hell out of me. Ever since I was a kid and saw. I. I saw a school friend of mine burnt to death. Which is why Lavalier used it against you. How could he know that? By searching your mind for those areas of experience in which you are most vulnerable. It's possible? Certainly, with hypnosis. I do it often with patients of mine. There. Do not even try to use that hand for a while. In a few days, I will remove the stitches. Yes, but could you persuade someone they were on fire under hypnosis? Yes. Well, if they went on believing it? They would very quickly become deranged. 
It could even happen that they would die of their imaginary burns, but without even as much as a scorch mark on them. Oh, come on, that's voodoo stuff. It's, it's black magic. There are aborigines in Australia who die only because a witch doctor has pointed a bone at them. Believe me, David, even you, a sophisticated European in the 20th century, could have died tonight. My God. Thank you. Could anyone who can hypnotize pull a stroke like that? No. Although it is not difficult to bring about a hypnotic state in a willing subject. Suggestion in depth of the kind to which you were subjected. That's altogether different. So Lavalier has got to be a bloody past master at it. Or something even more than that, perhaps. Yes, yes, but why? Oh. Why? All of a sudden, and I become such a threat to him. You had seen the file he has on Anne. Well, even so. All right. So he's got a bloody great dossier on her, and I'd like to know why and where he got the information from. But that's such a deep, dark secret that he's desperate enough to want to try to kill me to stop me from asking those questions. This dossier, it is very detailed, you say. Full biography, as far as I can see, going way back. It's even got photostats of her medical records in it. And Anne is unaware of this? Well, totally. You're sure of that? Well, positive. My God, if she did know, she'd have raised hell about it. Wouldn't you, if you suddenly discovered that someone you'd only met a couple of times had a file on you with your life history in it? Yes, I would. And with good reason. So, if she did know anything, she'd have said something to one or other of us about it before now, wouldn't she? I would have thought so. Of course she would. And she can't know about that picture on his desk, either. Or that she's as much a dead ringer for Agnes Beauvoir as he is for de Montrefort. Even more so, and, and particularly tonight. You know, if that Beauvoir woman was still around and she and Anne were dressed alike, I... I honestly don't think anyone could tell them apart. Which means, then, that Lavalier's prime motive was to prevent you from telling Anne these things. It has to be, I suppose. So if... If Anne's the key to what happened tonight, she's got to be at risk, too. I've left her up there at the castle. What are you doing? I'm going to get her out of there. Oh. You are in no condition to go anywhere. I doubt if you would get more than 50 metres before you collapsed. Oh, so we must ring the police. And what would we say to them, David, that the much respected, rich and powerful Raoul Lavalier tried to kill you? Exactly. Well, just that, he did. And when we tell them how, they would believe us, do you think? And we have absolutely no proof, do we? Yes, we can't just do nothing about Lavalier. And Anne's alone up there with him amongst all those, those weirdos. I don't think that she's in any immediate danger. How do you know that? I will telephone the house and see if Anne is back there yet. She may well be. I will try again later. Yes. Well, and, and keep trying till she answers. And if she's not there in half an hour, I'll, I'll just go. You up there will and... do nothing. In half an hour from now, you will be in bed, and I would have given you something to help you sleep. Oh, for God's sake! I couldn't sleep. Not after what's happened. Not until I know that Anne's okay. face that replaced that of Lavalier's when you first saw the flames, did you recognize it? Yes, it's, it's the face carved on the main door of the castle, some devil or other. Now, look through this book. It is Professor Zinderman's Psychological Study of Demonology. What? See if that figure appears to any of those illustrations. Please. Uh, would you like another drink? Uh, no thanks. You know, what I couldn't get over was that damn pendant thing Anne was wearing round her neck tonight. Yes, I agree. That is strange. One hell of a coincidence. And you're quite sure, are you, that it was identical to the one in the portrait of Agnes Beauvoir? Well, it looked it to me. But I'm near to it anyway. I mean, for a moment I actually thought... 
If Anne hadn't already told me where she got it from, I'd... Her husband gave it to her, you said, didn't you? Yes. And you have no reason to doubt her? Well, of course not. I mean, why would she lie to me about a thing like that? Why, indeed. And I'm sure that she did not. So that has to be what it was about, then. A coincidence. It's damn weird, though. Her coming downstairs wearing it and then seeing one exactly the same in the portrait. Here. This is it. This is the figure on the carving. What does it say under the picture? Well, I, I, I can't read, Joan. Oh. Asmodeus, the inciter of lechery, the king of demons in Hebrew tradition, the custodian of secrets, and according to Judaic legend, the builder of Solomon's temple. Of course. I sort of realised Asmodeus. The name means something to you? Wait. It fits in perfectly with the Castello Iosteodorus. The Temple of Solomon is where the Knights Templar got their name from. Temple, Templar. And among other devils, it was Asmodeus the Inquisition accused the Templars of worshipping. More and more, it seems as though they were right. Now, my guess is that uh, Tybalt de Montefort had that carving put up there. It's a final act of defiance. And it would seem that Monsieur Lavalier has something of an affinity with it, too. So that at least is one question answered. Well, I, I don't see that identifying Asmodeus answers anything. No. And I wouldn't expect you to. But it could be the answer to everything. Madam, if it's too early for you, I'll come back later. No. Monsieur Le Valier has asked me to say that he'd be delighted if you join him for breakfast, madam. I'll run your bath for you. My clothes? Your dress is being pressed, madam, and I sent your underthings to the laundry. Oh, I see. They'll be returned shortly, in no more than an hour from now. What do I wear meanwhile? I, I hardly think this is suitable to go down to breakfast in, is it? If madam would care to choose. These things are new. None of them's ever been worn. May I suggest this would be very suitable this morning, madam? I will take care of it personally, Myrtle. Good. And report back to me as soon as you have confirmation. Of course. Later, I want to go through the program for the next three days in detail with you. Mrs. Tierney will be leaving shortly after breakfast. But I warn you, Colonel, you may have to get used to her presence permanently. Is everything ready for this evening's arrivals? Yes, sir. All the necessary arrangements have been made. Good morning, Mrs. Tierney. Good morning. After breakfast, Herr von Reitz will have a car waiting to take you home the moment you require it. Indeed, Mirtro. I will have one of the drivers put on standby immediately. Thank you. Excuse me. You slept well, I hope. Yes, thank you. But I think I've rather outstayed my welcome. Nonsense. I feel terrible about this. 
I have absolutely no explanation at all. You must forgive me. My dear Mrs. Tierney, there is nothing to forgive. And believe me, you are welcome here at any time and for as long as you wish to remain. The explanation is quite simple. It was getting late and you were tired. Please think no more about it. Now, are you hungry? What would you like? An English breakfast? No, thank you. Just uh, some coffee and orange juice, please. You're looking particularly beautiful this morning, if I may say so. And I see you found something that pleased you. Well, it would have been difficult not to. It was such an incredible choice. I'll have this cleaned, of course, and see that you get it back. This is of no importance. And if you like it enough, it would give me great pleasure if you would keep it. <laughs> it's very generous of you, but I couldn't do that. It suits you so well. Just the same. As you wish. Thank you. I feel very guilty about David, too. I neglected him last night, I'm afraid. He was probably looking for me everywhere. No, I do not think Mr. Bascom was too concerned. But then, perhaps, he had other things on his mind. The last time I saw him, he was greatly enjoying the company of a very attractive young lady with whom he had been dancing for some time. Oh, really? What time did he leave? I have no idea. He didn't say goodbye. I understand he was in something of a hurry. Was he? Well, I hope he got home safely. Some more coffee. No, thanks. I ought to be leaving. Well, only if you have to, please. Otherwise, my home is your home. Thank you, but I must. And I'm sure you've got far more important things to do. Nothing that takes precedence over enjoying your company for a few moments longer, I assure you. However, if you really feel you must go. And not before time, either. Thank you. Well, have you decided? I'm sorry? The very first time I came here, you said you were seriously considering giving me that view. I just wondered if you'd made your mind up yet. I can't imagine why I hesitated. <laughs> Tell me something. If a man could offer you everything you've ever desired, even more than those things, much more, more than you could possibly imagine, and if all he wanted in return was the pleasure of that giving, and he asked you to marry him, would you consider such a proposition? No, I couldn't. Not for a moment. Why? You know why, I think. But if he told you that he understood about the way you still feel about your husband, and that he was prepared to accept that, for however long it may continue, that that was another of his gifts to you, and that beyond that time even, he would make no demands on you that you were not willing to meet, that your only obligation would be companionship and to be close to him. What then? It wouldn't be fair in so many ways. Children, for instance. A man with so much to offer would have a great deal of money and a great deal of power. And someone like that would feel cheated if he didn't have a son or a daughter to inherit those things from him. Circumstance would probably demand that he had to have an heir. And with me, even if he was very patient, and if in time I came to love him enough, well, it just wouldn't be possible. You see, I, I can't have children. That is sad, of course, for you. But if he persuaded you, that was of no importance whatever to him. That he welcomed the fact, even. I doubt if he could. But if he did, and if the offer appealed to you in every other respect, and you didn't find him altogether unattractive, would you not at least give it your deep thought before giving him your final answer? Well, if I was absolutely sure that he'd given the same kind of thought to what he was proposing, and that this was something he really wanted to do, then I'd have to. I'd owe him that. Good. Forgive me, I'm keeping you. Regrettably, I have business commitments which will take up most of my time for the next three or four days. 
But if you are free next Wednesday, perhaps I could persuade you to have dinner with me then. speak to David Bascom, please. No, no. No, I'm English. Do you speak English? No. David Bascom. Oh, dear. This is ridiculous. Um, uh, Aboro na Meliso o Kirie Bascom. Yes. Yes, David Bascom. Nay. What? No. No, I don't understand. Oh. Then, Casero Elinica. And I searched the area around the car thoroughly, but there is no trace of him. Was the car badly damaged? No. It had merely skidded off the road. So then I went into Rhodes Town and asked for him at the house where he has a room. I merely said that in conversation last night, Bascom had agreed to lend me an old book on Rhodes which he has, and that I had arranged to pick it up this morning. He was not at home, of course. The people there said they had not seen him since yesterday. He will turn up soon. I will detail one of our people to keep a watch on his lodgings and inform us the moment there is any news. No, that will not be necessary. We already have a very reliable source of information. Mrs. Tierney will be the first to hear what has happened to him. They don't speak any English, and I don't understand Greek, so that didn't get me anywhere. But when I got there, though, I got the impression that David hadn't been home all night. Then it occurred to me that you might know where he is. I did try to telephone, but the line was engaged. I was probably trying to reach you. Oh, oh well, it's not that I'm worried or anything, but he sort of shot off last night without a word to anyone, and I just wondered if he was OK. Have you heard from him today? Sit down, Anne. I'm afraid that they have some very sad news. What is it? Has there been an accident? Is he hurt? David is dead, Anne. Oh, no. Oh, no. He can't be. I'm sorry, but there is no easy way to tell anyone such a thing. I, I don't believe it. David, dead. It will come as a great shock to many people, I think. But, but what happened? Was it his car? Was he in a crash? No, it wasn't an accident. What then? We will not know that until after a heart attack, I think. Oh, no. No, that's not possible. I mean, David's fit and healthy. He's a young man. Regrettably, it is not only the middle aged and the old who are struck down by heart diseases. But where, where did it happen? When? Last night, here. It was quite late. I was in here reading and... I heard David banging on the front door. When I opened it, he collapsed into the hall, and then I... But, but, but he, he was all right up at the Castello. He was dancing and making jokes. He was enjoying himself. You say he left in a hurry? So I was told. Oh, you weren't with him then? No, we, we got separated. Well, you know what it's like at parties, and I, I was... I don't know where I was. Then I would say that David must have suddenly been taken ill. I expect he looked for you, but then, feeling much worse, uh, decided he needed medical attention and quickly. But, but why didn't he say anything to anybody? Uh, the people there would all have been strangers to you. Well, he could have told Raoul. Monsieur Lavalier? Soon after dawn, I went looking for his car. It is lying in a ditch on the roadside about 
three kilometers away. Then it could have been an accident. Oh, no, no. The car is only a little damaged. And there were no marks on David, apart from one or two bruises. He wasn't injured in any way. Where is he now? Uh, they have uh, taken him to the mortuary. Can I see him? Uh, not now. A postmortem examination is necessary. Tomorrow, perhaps. This is a sad day for both of us. I telephoned at your house, of course, immediately after it happened, we, but you weren't there, and I, I called again this morning, but there was still no reply. No, I wasn't. I... I didn't get home till the early hours, and this morning I was probably out shopping when you rang. I came by taxi as me. Will you drive me home? Of course, but why not stay here? No, I, I'd really like to go home. I understand. Oh, it's me. Monsieur Lavalier. Shall I introduce you? I would rather you did not. No, of course not. It's hardly the right moment, is it? I will telephone you this evening. Yes, please do. And thank you, Ismini. You must forgive me. I've been very selfish, just thinking of it as my loss and forgetting he was your friend, too. And for longer. <laughs> we will talk more later. One of my staff reported that he had seen Mr. Baskin's car overturned by the side of the road. I was concerned. I could not reach you on the phone. When I found you were not at home, I thought I would wait here a little for your return. What is it, my dear? Tell me. What has happened? Yasmini thinks he must have been taken ill very suddenly and that he was trying to get to his doctor here in town, but after he put his car into the ditch, he, he just couldn't make it this far. I cannot tell you how sorry I am. If only he'd come to me and told me that he was feeling unwell. And if I'd stuck close to him, he'd more than likely still be alive now. Oh, no, Anne. You must not blame yourself in any way. A man of his age, full of life and apparently so fit. There is no way you nor anyone could have foreseen such a tragedy, or imagined it possible even. Now, promise me, you will dismiss that thought from your mind forever. I'll try to. You must. If only his car had been a little nearer Dr. Christiana's house when it left the road, then perhaps she might have saved him. There are so many if-onlys. But, as it was, he was beyond help by the time he got to her. He must have died just seconds after she opened the door to him. And without a word? Well, at least he didn't linger. If there is anything I can do, anything, please do not hesitate to ask. No doubt his family would like him buried in England, in which case, my private aircraft is at their disposal. Please see to it they are informed of this. Oh, yes, I will. Thank you. You're very kind. And I would like to be of help to you, too, in this moment of sorrow. As I wish I could have been when you lost your husband. Such a pity you never met, Don. 
You would have liked him, I think. And he would have liked you as much as I do. Has Mrs. Tierney heard anything? Bascom is dead. And the cause? A heart attack, it would seem. Much as I expected. Hello? Oh, hello, Ismini. I'm okay. And you? I would like to see you. I thought perhaps we would spend the evening together, unless you would prefer to be alone. Oh, no. That would be good. For both of us, I think. Uh, will you come here, or shall I come to you? Oh, no. You don't want to bother driving out to town. Um, I will get a taxi out to your place. Fine. Uh, how did uh, Monsieur Lavalier take the news? Oh. He was appalled. Yes, he would have been, of course. And he was very sympathetic. I'll see you soon, then. Adieu. Something occurred to me, Ismini, on my way out here. I, I should have thought of it before, I suppose, but... Do you know if anybody's been in touch with David's family? Or the university come to that? I, I mean, is it something that we ought to do? I don't even know if he had any family, thanks. Or how to get in touch with them. Do you? There's no need to contact his family. David is not dead, Anne. What are you saying? Of course he is. You... You told me he was. You described... I lied to you. He's alive. And he is here. I don't understand. He... You lied. But listen... It's I... mean you lied about something like that. It's not possible. You wouldn't have done that. It... I'm sorry, Anne. I'm so sorry we had to do this awful thing to you, but honestly, there was no other way. But why? Why did you do it? How could you be so cruel to let me think, to allow me to believe for one moment that you... And oh, you, for God's sake! You must have known what effect it would have on me so soon after... David the... cannot be blamed for this. It was only after much persuasion that he agreed to it. But why? Why do it? What possible reason? It was essential you convinced Lavalier that I was dead. And to do that, you had to believe it yourself. So that when he looked into your mind, he would find nothing but comfort there. Oh, for God's sake, what the hell are you talking about? What's he got to do with all of this? Yes. All right, so where are you? I expected you back here an hour ago. I see. Why was his aircraft delayed? <laughs> no, I appreciate that, Colonel. You cannot be held responsible for the weather conditions over southern France. Even I do not expect that much of you. And Chevalier Duan is none the worst of his experience, I trust. I see. How very unpleasant. Do give him my condolences. No doubt he will recover fully during the drive to the Castello. 
Yes, of course, immediately. He is the last to arrive and the proceedings must begin on time. My response to a weak stomach is confined to sympathy. It does not extend to indulgence. But that's not something that can really have happened. Not the way you've told it. I mean, that's a, a nightmare. It can't be real, any of it. It was all too real, Anne. It was only because of his meanie that I survived oh, it. Oh, but look, nobody has that kind of power. It is just not possible to make another person believe... It is believe possible. It. Accept that. And hold on to it. Because the only other explanation is almost unthinkable. Well, what do you mean? There's no reason why either of you should have to face up to that possibility. Until it is all that's left to us. For now, I would rather we clung to everything within our grasp, which, however extraordinary, is nevertheless feasible. Oh, well, I mean, if it's feasibility you're looking for, let's start with a portrait that you say Lavalier has. OK, you can see some resemblance to me in it, the shape of my face, colour of my hair, my eyes, and so on. OK, I'll go along with that, no problem. But there can be nothing more in it than those kind of resemblances, however striking. And the fact that you've chosen to see her as my twin... Well, I mean, that could be your imagination working overtime now, couldn't it? I mean, that's feasible, isn't it? No, Anne, I saw what I saw. You're her double. It could be a picture of you, only it's not. It's a picture of Agnes Beauvoir, the woman Lavalier's look-alike strangled. And are you suggesting that I'm in some kind of danger from him because of that? I think the three of us are in danger because of it. But you, most of all. Oh, I just don't believe it. After what he did to David... Well, I... I'm just not convinced by that. Oh, oh look, come on. I don't mean that you made it up. I mean, I don't mean that. Not for the hell of it. Why should you? I don't mean that. But you know better than any of us the kind of tricks the mind can play. Yes, I do. But as you have learned from your own experience, that is all too often merely an easy explanation. In this instance, though, I have no doubt at all that from the moment Lavalier found him in his study, and until shortly after he arrived here, David could no longer be described as sane. His mind was being manipulated, and in such a way as to destroy him. But we are still left with the question, why? Exactly. Why? I, why should Lavalier give a damn about anything that David saw up at the Costello? Well, including that file he's got on you? Well, I can think of a possible explanation for that. Oh. And what's that? Oh, it doesn't matter. It's just not that odd, that's all. A man does not normally compile a comprehensive dossier on a woman before he asks her to marry him, does he? Well, a man in his position might very well do. He asked you to marry him? Yes, indirectly. Which hardly points to the fact that he means me any harm now, does it? Tell me something. That pendant you wore last night. Well, the one that's exactly the same as Agnes Beauvoir's in the portrait. Mm -hmm. What about it? David tells me that your husband gave it to you. Mm, he did. May I ask when? Oh, I, I don't know. When exactly? I don't remember. When, Anne? And I want the truth. Tell me. You must look at me. A few days ago. Well, you can't have done. That's not possible. Look at me, Anne. How often has he come to you like that? Several times. Since when? The day of the festival at Archangelos. It happened the first time that night. And when was the last time? Last night. At the Castello. You saw your husband there? And each time you have made love, yes? But you said nothing. Not even that you had seen him again. I couldn't. At first I thought it was just a dream, even though it seemed so real. But then... He when... gave you the pendant. And in the morning you still had it. So you knew it wasn't a dream? He had come back to me. But I still couldn't be sure that it would last. And I was afraid that if I said anything... And on these visits to you, has Don ever spoken to you? 
No. He doesn't need to. It's enough that he's there. I understand. And help me. We must try to reach your husband again, tonight, now. And it is desperately important for you that we do. Take my hands. Why is it so important, Ismini? Don and I are no longer apart. We're together, and I'm content. Don't fight me, Anne, whatever you do. I beg you. It didn't work the other day. What makes you so certain we'll be successful tonight? When we tried before, what image of your husband were you holding in your mind? As I had seen him that afternoon in the village. Well, now I want you to remember him at some happy time you spent together in England. A time perhaps long ago. However, he appeared to you here, on Rhodes. Dismiss those memories altogether. Try that. Good. Good. Now keep that image firmly fixed. Yes, Anne. Yes. I see him clearly this time. This time. Yes? They are ready for you, Mertrud. Stay with me, Anne. Stay with me. Now. He's here. In the room with us. Do you feel it? Do you feel his presence? Yes. He's close. Very close. Oh, darling. Here. You're here. Oh, thank God. And love. At last. At last. 